Good morning everybody and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on how to procure a zero emission construction site. This is going to be the first webinar on, uh, of a cycle of webinars which is aimed at promoting and uh, spreading the very good results of the Big Buyers uh, project. Um, we have many, many participants registered, uh, 336, really from all over Europe and also from some third countries. So we really are, we are really happy to see you so many uh, here. And we really look forward for the presentations from our um, distinguished uh, speakers. Uh, let's move immediately to the housekeeping rules. Uh, we, which are, will clarify before we begin. So uh, only the speakers will be able to speak uh, through WebEx um, while the, um, the webinar is a webcast. To submit questions or comments, please use uh, the application Slido. Uh, we will read the questions and invite the relevant speaker to, to answer, answer to them. So please indicate in your question to whom the question is, is addressed. Um, also, if there is questions which remain unanswered, we will uh, collect them and answer in our uh, LinkedIn group, uh, which will be present in one of the last slides of, of this event. And of course, if you have any technical issue, please also let us know. Um, now I will uh, introduce our uh, uh, excellent, uh, excellent speakers. Uh, uh, we have three speakers from uh, uh, cities which have been implementing a zero emission construction site. So Philip Mortensen, senior advisor uh, at the Agency for Climate from the city of Oslo and Marit Epso, sustainability manager, building and construction agency for improvement and development also of the city of Oslo. And also we have Christian Benito Manrique, which is a senior engineer technician at the manager's office, mobility area of urban ecology from the city of Barcelona. Um, before giving them the floor, also we thought it was uh, uh, very useful to have um, a quick update on uh, the progress of decarbonizing uh, the construction sector uh, connected to the Fit for 55 uh, package. And in this respect, we have our colleague, Philip Mosley, from the construction unit of DigiGrow, who will give us a very quick update. So the, f the floor is now to, to Philip for this uh, quick update on decarbonization in the construction industry. Thank you very much, uh, President, and uh, it's very good to be here today uh, with this event. I, I actually had the pleasure of uh, visiting uh, zero emission construction sites in, in Oslo myself uh, not long ago. So. Um, uh, they're a fantastic development in construction. Um, what we're working on uh, in, uh, in DG Grow uh, right now is the transition pathway for construction, which is uh, very, very soon now going to be published. Uh, we're holding an event of the High Level Construction Forum on the 15th of March, uh, where this will be um, presented and, and discussed. Uh, so this is uh, like all the transition pathways under development for the different industries. Um, this is looking at the digital and green transition and the resilience uh, of construction. And um, uh, the uh, work has been ongoing for the last year or so with many consultations and, and events and uh, working with the high level construction forum. Uh, which is our forum of uh, member state authorities and stakeholders and all the industry. And indeed, uh, the life cycle emissions of construction was was voted by that forum as, as one of the top priorities for the transition pathway. So uh, it features heavily in it. Um, when it comes to uh, policies and legislation, uh, so we have the Fit for 55, of course, and, and um, within that, uh, the the legislation that will most affects uh, construction is the uh, Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, um, where uh, which is ongoing, uh, that the negotiations are ongoing between the Council and Parliament. Um, and in the Commission's proposal there, um, it would be mandatory for all new buildings uh, to carry out a life cycle assessment um, uh, of the whole life cycle emissions. Um, so 
we also have at the same time a revision ongoing of the construction products regulation and this would harmonize the data um, that would go into these life cycle assessments uh, so we have a, a kind of coordinated strategy there of um, harmonizing the data and uh, having mandatory calculations and the more we can have the industry carrying out life cycle assessments the better and of course uh, zero emission um, equipment would would factor in as one of the the ways of uh, reducing overall emissions of construction another piece of work that uh, is ongoing is uh, a renovation wave action called the 2050 uh, roadmap to reduce life cycle emissions of buildings and our colleagues in DG Environment have a study that is bringing new data for the first time. We're going to have some EU level data on the whole life carbon, uh, so the whole life cycle emissions of EU um, uh, buildings and uh, construction related to buildings. Um, and a roadmap is being developed uh, by the end of this year. Uh, there will be an event on that of the High Level Construction Forum in April. And um, so, so all of this together means that we're, you know, this this subject of of reducing the emissions of construction is is a really high priority, and uh, we're we're advancing on on several fronts on this. Uh, we also have um, different studies, collecting more data all the time. Uh, so so it's um, it's really good to have you know this event today, and I'll be following it to see uh, what we what we can hear and learn. Uh, about uh, the construction sites in in different cities. So uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to give you an update and I will look forward to, to hearing the presentations and uh, wish you a good event. Thank you. Many, many thanks, uh, Philip. Uh, many thanks for being uh, so clear also on the, on the forthcoming uh, strategy and on, on its content. Um, unfortunately, we have a small uh, technical hiccup, so we have been able to hear you, but the, those in web streaming have not been able to see you, but we are trying to, to uh, fix, fix this. In the meantime, we will go on with, the, with, our, with our agenda, which will include uh, so another two uh, parts and will be an introduction on the topic by our speakers, uh, which have been implementing successfully a zero emission construction site, and then we will have the uh, Q&A uh, session. And this will be then followed by my short recall on the forthcoming Big Buyers uh, project, which will be, uh, which is about to be launched and to start to start again. So, without any further ado, I will now pass the floor to uh, Marit. I understand that uh, Marit and Philip have split the role, so Marit will be doing the presentation and Philip will be taking the question. So, Marit, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, President, and thank you so much to DigiGrow for organizing this webinar. So, I will try to share my screen and uh, let me see if you can see my presentation. So, if I could just get a little Hint, if you can see my presentation all right, and I can begin. Many. Yes, it's okay. I, I think Perfect. we can see it. So many thanks, Marit. Go ahead. Great. Thank you so much. So, uh, speaking to you from Oslo, Norway, uh, the title of the webinar is how to procure uh, zero emission construction sites. And we'll try to share some experiences from exactly that from uh, Oslo, Norway. And um, uh, like, uh, as you see in the picture to the right, uh, we have a lot of experience now. We have more than 60 uh, partly or wholly uh, electrical or emission-free uh, construction sites ongoing now. So this uh, picture was taken just a few weeks back. We were visiting a site where they also test out hydrogen storage and battery electric machines. Uh, so we, th we think that if we can make it in the cold and snowy uh, climate of Oslo, it should be possible to make this also uh, elsewhere. So it's a very exciting project. So I'll get more into detail about that. Uh, as uh, we were introduced, uh, Philip, my colleague, he's working at the Climate Agency and I'm working at the uh, Green Procurement uh, Agency in the city of Oslo. So for those of you who have not been here, uh, Philip mostly just uh, uh, mentioned that he had. So we wish you all welcome, of course. But uh, for those who haven't been here, we are the capital of Norway. 
about 700,000 inhabitants and 50,000 employees. So about 15% of the population in Norway lives in Oslo. So it's a, it's a small country with uh, not many big cities, but uh, we are front runners in the construction. So as you can see in the picture, we have constructed quite a lot in the downtown Oslo the last few years. And uh, talking about procurement, we spend about 3 billion euros approximately in annual procurements from the city of Oslo. So, uh, just uh, a quick uh, key points that I'm going to uh, talk you through in this presentation. Uh, four points. We'd like to start off with uh, talking about why emission-free construction sites is such a key climate measure for us uh, and some results from Oslo. Uh, secondly, we'd like to just uh, give you uh, uh, some background as for why we are participating in the Big Buyers program and some activities in the working group. As you can see in the picture also to the right here, uh, we have been uh, active in this group, uh, leading the, the work a uh, couple of years now. Uh, the picture is from a market dialogue in Oslo, uh, also on a snowy day. Uh, thirdly, the way forward, we were very happy to hear uh, from Philip Mosley just uh, before now, some, uh, some news about the political agenda in the EU. And uh, we also have some uh, thoughts about the way forward for the, uh, the joint statement of demand. And uh, we'll get back to that. Uh, and. Uh, to sum it up, we'll give a few points of the lessons learned in Oslo that we think you can uh, take back home, hopefully. So starting off, uh, why is this such a key climate measure for us? Why uh, the building and construction sector? There's so much other uh, climate uh, greenhouse gas emissions to, to start with, of course. Uh, the backdrop for Oslo uh, is that we have a really high uh, emissions uh, reductions target. We want to cut 95% of the emissions in Oslo. This is totally in line, of course, with the IPCC and uh, what the researchers, uh, the scientists tell us are absolutely necessary to uh, combat climate change. Uh, so far, uh, we have uh, cut about 30% of our emissions. And if we want to cut by 95% within 2030, we have only seven years to go. And uh, we have to speed up the tempo and the scope a lot. Uh, but talking about emission, um, talking about construction industry, we know that uh, more than uh, half of our emissions uh, currently uh, come from mobility and about 12% come from other mobile combustions such as diesel engines, typically in the construction sector. So the mobility sector, of course, covers uh, many um, sectors, but we uh, have calculated that about in total, uh, maybe 20%, so one fifth, of our emission comes from building and construction sites in Oslo. So it will be a very important contributor to the climate goals if we can manage to cut a lot of these emissions. So uh, Oslo's story uh, is a lot about using the procurement muscle because we taxpayers, we pay for a lot of this construction business. Uh, we construct roads and infrastructure, kindergartens, schools, and so on. We are a big procurer in this market and we can turn this market around. So this is an important muscle. Uh, just a brief timeline, what have we done? Uh, we started uh, back in 2016, 2017, uh, testing out fossil-free construction pilots, uh, switching from fossil diesel to uh, sustainable biofuels. Uh, from this on, we headed towards uh, higher goals. So emission-free construction sites was the next, uh, the next uh, step. And in 2019, we uh, completed the worlds, as far as we know, first emission-free construction sites in uh, all of the fifth street um, in the mid downtown. You can see it on the picture right next to city hall. And uh, in uh, late, 19, uh, late 2019, uh, the city council adopted, adopted some standard requirements to be used in all uh, municipal construction and building uh, uh, sites. I'll get back to that in a brief moment. So as I was uh, just starting off my, off my presentation, now in 2022, we have more than 60 plus projects with electrical machinery, partly or wholly. So this has been a step-by-step -step building stone upon stone uh, uh, journey for us. We have learned a lot uh, on the way and we'll try to share that with you. So I think the secret is also from going to pilot uh, to scale. From us, uh, the key point uh, from, from doing that has been the standard requirements that the city council adopted in 2019. There's a picture uh, to the right. Uh, we have also translated these requirements to English. So I'll give you the, the links uh, where you can find all the information uh, just in a, a moment. 
but first of all, it's important to know that the standard requirements is, uh, is valid for all municipal procure procurements of building and construction works from 2019 and onward. So we have a couple of years of experience now. And uh, the requirements, they encompass both machinery on site and transport to and fro uh, the, the site. So the last mile transport and uh, the fossil free is the minimum. So that is the absolute minimum. We, we do not uh, include fossil energy anymore in our uh, building and construction sites. And emission free is uh, awarded through award criteria. So we have, uh, have some technical specificalities on that that you can read also in the English uh, version of the, of the requirements. Uh, important to note is also that uh, from 2019, fossil free was the minimum. But from 2025, uh, so that is in a two and a half years, emission free will be the minimum. So we're now working on going from uh, fossil free as a basis to emission free. It is a long step, but we are going in the right direction. This is just something for you to pin on your office wall. Check out when you go back home. So I'm not going to go through it, but there's a lot of information in English that we would like to share. So please make use of it. So some results from these standard requirements. Uh, the, these are the figures for 2021, as uh, we have not uh, yet uh, qualified the, the figures from uh, last year. So this is the, the most updated figures that we have, statistics. So in 2021, from all our municipal construction works combined, so that means schools, kindergartens, nursing homes, uh, road, water and sewage, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we have about 1% fossil fuels and 99% fossil free. Uh, from which uh, about half of this was electric or zero emission. So we are going in the right direction, but of course we need to speed up since 2025 is approaching fast. So uh, we have also some figures about how much uh, CO2 we have shared, but I'm not going to go through it in detail. Uh, we have some uh, results, I think, that we are, uh, it's important for us to share with the big buyers. But as I said, we also need to increase our tempo and scope, and that is exactly why we are contributing and participating in the big buyers program and such. This is important for us uh, to join forces and learn from each other. We still have a lot to learn, and we have experiences to share. So for us, it's really important that uh, DG Grow is promoting strategic use of uh, procurement, uh, to drive the green transition. And we have been leading the SEMCON, the Zero Emission Construction Sites uh, group for a couple of years now, uh, going strong, uh, although uh, some um, COVID measures. So we had uh, some physical meetings, but also a lot online, of course. So for us, the most important uh, lessons have been to share actually the knowledge that we have gained uh, from working on these pilot projects, um, learning together and develop pilot projects, local policies and instruments uh, within the group. We also have had some um, coordinated market dialogue at the European level, which uh, the picture is actually from uh, 2019, a um, uh, joint market dialogue, also uh, including European organizations like the ECE, the European uh, uh, Group for Machine Developers. So for us, it's been important to have someone to discuss the technological issues with, the challenges, the solutions, and engage with stakeholders to develop um, the policy framework. Uh, a really important outcome of the working group, in our view, is the joint statement of demand, uh, which um, it's open for more signatories. Uh, we'll not go through it in detail, but uh, uh, as you see on the screen now popping up, uh, we already have uh, some cities, uh, major procurers and buyer, big buyers have already signed. So it goes so all the way from Bodø in the very north of Norway to Barcelona in the south of Europe. So we hope to get more signatories, of course. The key points in this uh, joint statement is that uh, to, to sign this statement, um, uh, you are obliged to require fossil-free construction machinery in your own public projects from 2025 with at least 20% emission free where that is available. So of course you can over uh, fulfill this uh, target, but that, that's the, like the, the minimum, the 20% uh, emission free. And from 2030, uh, we increase our ambition on the European level with at least 50% uh, emission free. So as you can see in Oslo, we are already at about 50% emission free and we'd like to go forward, but uh, we hope that uh, this is like a, a minimum uh, to sign the statement of demand. So um, take it home, read it, and uh, join it. I encourage you to have a look at it. The way forward for us 
is, uh, of course, we would like to participate further on in the Big Buyers Programme. It's in a very important arena for us. And I think that together on the European level, we can uh, we can increase the market much more uh, jointly and collaboratively than we can do uh, just separately. And uh, we think that we must continue to engage with the stakeholders across the whole value chain. We need to develop more pilot projects and gather lessons learned, uh, among other things, uh, for the uh, temporary power supply that you see in the picture. It's a very important issue. We've spent a lot of time discussing that. How can we get enough power uh, to these uh, emission-free machines? We also need to identify barriers and opportunities. And uh, a major obstacle today is that we lack uh, a strong policy framework. We lack regulation and economic incentives at the national and EU level. So I'm very glad to hear from Philip Mosley just uh, before now that this is approaching and maybe hopefully uh, increasing the tempo of, uh, going forward. And we, I think this important uh, uh, mission for the group is also to provide that input to the policymakers in EU and nationally how uh, we are the practitioners here. We, we are doing the procurements, we are seeing the market, we are talking to them. How can we uh, encourage them to uh, make a more friendly policy framework for emission-free construction sites? So uh, I'm uh, approaching the end, but uh, finally, I'd just like to encourage you to take a look at the joint statement of demand and see if your city or your organization might be able to, to sign it and we can uh, gather more momentum for the market. And uh, since the title of this uh, webinar was how to procure a zero emission construction sites, uh, just a few points to conclude from Oslo's, uh, on Oslo's behalf, some lessons learned from us ambitions, whether it is the climate goals, uh, whether you want to increase innovation, you want to reduce the noise in your city. An example is that we have had a lot of visits uh, to our emission-free construction sites, such as from Japan, as you see in the picture. Uh, speak of your ambitions and, uh, and this will uh, uh, gather momentum, we think. Of course, dialogue with the market, of which this webinar is an important part, but also directly locally, uh, dialogue with your uh, local market, but also dare to challenge because, because uh, our uh, very clear experience is that sometimes you have to ask for some uh, things that do not exist yet, like emission-free construction sites did not exist prior to us setting these uh, targets. So dare to challenge the market. And seek advice, use the available resources, like the webpage of the big buyers is a goldmine of information and lessons learned. Uh, make use of it and get in touch if you need to, to discuss something. Uh, it's important to start, uh, start with a small step, a pilot first before you go uh, all in, but choose wisely. Pick a pilot that will, uh, yeah, that will fit to your goals and uh, that will not create too much, much problem in the beginning. Secure power supply is a very much a key issue for us. Early planning, very important. Make sure you also have some um, a dialogue with the market when you draft your procurement documents. We had a lot of experience with that. And uh, document and share your uh, experiences, like technical issues, practical barriers, other experiences that you may have so that others can learn from them. And uh, finally, go from pilot to scale into business as usual and embed the, this, uh, these goals into your overall procurement strategy. We have a lot of uh, experiences with that in Oslo. I hope you can share it with you later. So I welcome any questions and uh, yeah, I look forward to also hearing from Barcelona and others. Thank you so much. Great, Marit. Many, many thanks for your uh, very clear presentation. We covered both technical aspects, the vision, and also a lot of policy suggestions, lesson learned. So it's really, it's really good. Um, of course, all the presentations and all the slides will be made available uh, in the, in, for example, in our uh, newsletter. And so you will have the opportunity to look at them into uh, more detail. I will now Without any further ado, pass the floor to Christian Benito Manrique from Barcelona for his experience about the zero emission construction site. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, President. Thank you very much to the DG Grow. Thank you already. Thank you, Mary, for your great explanation. Uh, for Barcelona, we also 
feel that Oslo is our big brother who can teach us how to do our next steps in the electrification of our working sites. So thank you for everything you are uh, teaching to us. So we are in another phase of electrification. We, uh, we, we have a, a lack of experience, a lack of knowledge we had uh, a few years ago, but we, we fortunately, uh, thanks to participating to the big barriers and all the knowledge that we can learn. S sorry to interrupt you one second, Christian. We have uh, just a, a technical issue which uh, is still ongoing, so we are not able to uh, see you uh, in the web streaming, but of course the slides are, are visible. Please go ahead. I'm just excusing to our audience for this uh, technical uh, problem, but please uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, of course, we can hear you perfectly. Yeah, we can hear you perfectly, and the slides, uh, and but the slides are visible. So let's go ahead with the slides. Many thanks. Okay. Thank you, Ivo. Um, okay. As I was saying, we are in an earlier stage of uh, implementing electric machinery in public works in Barcelona. So I will explain the pilot we we carried out uh, last summer in Barcelona. First of all, uh, I this one. Well, um, the, our primary goal is to prepare the city of Barcelona so that municipal Public works can be carried out, carried out involving electric machinery to improve the environmental quality. Uh, we are now the benefits for the city of the zero emissions of um, the combustion fuel combustion emissions. Uh, we want to improve the noise quality in the city and also the reduce the fuel tra traffic. Uh, it's, uh, also, it's known that we want to improve um, our brand Barcelona as a benchmark. And then uh, we want to get there. So how to achieve it? Uh, we know, already know that we have to establish a protocol to specify the type of works, which, which type of machinery and energy management system is feasible to use. Um, we, we have to do an action plan on energy infrastructure in Barcelona. And, and I already know that after speaking to our colleagues from Oslo and Bodo, that the way to achieve it is by acting in the BID specifications, but that's a, a, a later on stage. We had to start with a pilot, uh, knowing that the initial situation here is there is no presently local market of electric machinery manufacturers for public works. Uh, they are not uh, available immediately. They have to be on demand. Uh, there's no economy of scale, and so that uh, prices are not competitive uh, related to the fuel uh, machinery. The machinery we have in the, our market is small, uh, standalone machinery with batteries, um, but the large machinery depends on continuous networking connection. So knowing all this, and uh, with all the support and help and knowledge so obtained from big buyers and with uh, a key supplier uh, that has been German's OMS as a provider of the machinery. And we moved on and, and went to uh, do a working site uh, with the implication of sustainability for environmental measures department of the Barcelona City Council. Um, and we took analysis of energy consumption, energy cycle and performance, and lastly, the cost analysis. Uh, so these are these were the elements we we used in the pilot test. We use uh, two accumulators uh, for using the like for connecting the machinery to the electric network. The, as I will show after uh, a picture of the charging network we used. These were the machinery we could use in the pilot: an excava an excavator, and a damper, and a stamper rammer. We took some measures uh, thanks to the Department of Sustainability, and then uh, we. This is the actual, actually the the picture of the works in the down in Barcelona. These are the, the excavator, the damper, and the stamper rammer we used. And these were the the electric points of charge we used, 
we use the network of uh, BCM and Doya Barcelona, and Doya is connecting in, in Catalan. Um, these were these works were uh, situated in the um, a main street in Barcelona, uh, Balmes Street. It's a, it's a street with um, a lot of traffic, so it was um, it was a difficulty to take measures of the noise. We 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 took measures of the noise in the in the works. And the fact that the works were situated in this street, this so tra uh, with traffic so high and so noisy, difficult in measurements. But well, it, anyway, we we could find some results. I will show it. I will show them later. And these were the the accumulators and sockets we used to connect the machinery to the to the electric network. We needed these accumulators because uh, this charger only had two uh, sockets and we need to we needed to connect more than two machinery as i have said before we need to connect three machinery so we needed to use uh, an accumulator to to connect to the socket and also we we could take measures with these sockets with meters uh, to know exactly the consumption energy consumption of each, each machine as i said uh, the was were situated in the Balmes Street. Uh, it, it was an, an, a work in which we laid 172 meters of ductile cast iron pipes to so date the water network. Uh, and then it was, it was carried out last summer. Uh, the work uh, lasted six weeks, more, more or less six weeks, in which uh, we used Half of the works uh, we use fuel machinery, and half of the works uh, we use the electric machinery, 100 percent electric machinery. So that we could compare exactly the same condition in the same works in the same place to obtain a result of uh, actually uh, competitive between each uh, kind of machinery. So, okay, that the results uh, well. First of all, the 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 test the pilot test was right. There were there was no problem. Uh, as I said before, when I had the opportunity to, to speak up in the in big in the DGO in the European Commission in Brussels, um, there was no problem. Uh, in case it would be a, it would have been a, it would it was a big problem. Certainly, uh, we would we would. Uh, be on the newspaper because the work inside was uh, uh, stated really close to a very famous uh, building in Barcelona, La Pedrera, Antonio Gaudí's La Pedrera. So, fortunately, everything went well and we didn't appear in the newspaper except for uh, explaining what we were doing and and sharing the all the, the information we have about we had about the electric pilot we were doing. We were carried out, carrying out. So, excuse me. so the parameters we we could uh, measure, we we, we had uh, we, with the bleach calculated and measured these parameters: the energy consumption, uh, the energy cost, the CO2 emissions, the NO2 emissions, PM10, and noise. And then I now I I will show you the results, uh, the global consumptions. Uh, we had one 400 kilowatts hour, and let's compare the results uh, between the fuel and the electric machinery. Firstly, in the consumption, because it was the energy consumption clearly higher in the conventional fuel machines. As you can see, the consumption was broke, uh, more or less eight times higher in the conventional machines than the electrical machines. So the first uh, result we we got is that the energy consumption was still lower than we expected in the electric machine. So so that was that was really great news. The stamper rubber, the stamper rubber uh, consumption really was so slow that we we ignored the results because the, the, no it wasn't comparable um, to the excavator and the damper. Uh, related to the energy cost, uh, we. It's 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 it, it just it's, mm, the the test was carried out just in a moment that the energy cost has been so variable and has increased so much between uh, because of the 
the Ukrainian war. So also we can see the conventional machines have uh, energy cost four more more or less four times higher than the than the machine. So, excuse me, there's some there's some mistake here because the first first uh, this table is electric machine, not conventional machine, and the second, yes, is the conventional machine. The, uh, the energy cost of conventional machines it was higher, but not as as higher as we expected. And this was because the, the increase of the electric cost and because of the of, of, of everything is uh, happening unfortunately uh, these days. Still, the, the cost of conventional machine was clearly higher. Um, comparing the emissions from between electric and conventional machines, the CO2 emissions and the machines are, are we are speaking about the the primary energy, and again the consumption and the emissions were uh, clearly higher in the conventional machines, not because of that that was a result we already expected, but it can it can be. Yes, I think I think excuse because I think I, I, I can I can see another mistake here because the uh, emission of the damper are not uh, similar to the I oh, don't know no, it's okay it's okay sorry sorry I was I was comparing the excavator and the damper. Um, lately, the the surprise was the noise results uh, comparing the electric machines and the conventional machines. That but it, it's true that thinking about it now it's. It's not an, a so surprising results. The noise was more or less similar uh, between conventional and, and electric machines. Uh, it was, if you you think about it, that the noise of the the hammer, the the excavator, is when it's breaking the, the the soil. So it's the same noise when we break the soil with with any kind of machinery. So we have to focus on other um, other noises, and um, also the noise is a bit slower in the electric machine. It's lower in the electric machine compared to the conventional machine, not at, as lower as we expected. And the other thing we have to consider that we we carried out this working the works in the Balmes Street. As I said before, Balmes Street has many many traffic noise, and this this. This result, I think, we think, uh, has been altered, but because of this traffic noise. So, in order to do new uh, pilot tests, and if, we've got, if we want to compare the noise between this kind of machinery, we have to, as Marit said before, choose wisely, choose wisely, wisely the the next pilot because we need a, a working headway where we can compare, obtain noise result that can be comparable. So finally, the conclusions we we have, uh, as I said, the working, the works were satisfactory. Uh, the operators have been easily able to adapt to these machines, and, and they have not expressed any problems during the, the use. As I said, the sonometry results show no significant difference between the electric and conventional machines. They said because of the ambient noise and the, the, the operations of breaking the soil. And the clear difference is observed uh, regarding the cost of electricity, electricity consumption and the cost of fuel consumption. And finally, in respect to the cost analysis, the electric machine part of the works were a bit higher than the conventional machine because of the need of this battery accumulation. Uh, that I have spoken before about, uh, we needed to connect the three the three machines into the charging point. And in case we could find a way to charge to charge this machinery uh, with without the need of this battery battery, then the the cost could be equitable. So in case we we activate the market and we and we can find a way to lower the prices of the machinery, the rental machinery of electric machinery, and then the cost all will be also uh, competitive in electric machinery working sites, 
so we can make this, the the change to this kind of work. So this is the the challenge we have uh, uh, now in Barcelona to to make this attractive to to the construction um, to the construction companies and leading from the public administration, from leading from Barcelona. Changing our bid specifications. Um, well, I don't, I don't know exactly how. We have a few, a few ideas. We have then the help uh, that big buyers and other cities with more, more experience than us, like for Oslo, for example. Uh, we can uh, now move on, move forward to, to, to get to accomplish the joint statement of demand and to reduce the emissions of the working sites in Barcelona. So thank you very much for your attention. Many, many thanks, uh, Christian. Many, many thanks also for having uh, uh, driven us uh, through the operations of a zero emission construction site, looking at uh, issues like uh, cost, uh, consumption, uh, noise, uh, and also the issues of putting into place actually and the challenges that that uh, these uh, these of course uh, can imply in this uh, transition i also think that your presentation has uh, highlighted also the 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 power of of uh, aggregating demand in pulling the market towards developing uh, innovative solution which is what really the big buyers project is about now you can see on the screen the code for the slido to 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 um, to insert uh, your questions uh, and I really encourage you to, to do so uh, and to take advantage of the presence of our speakers. In the meantime, just to, uh, to, um, to ice break, maybe I would ask uh, Philip, uh, what are the experiences regarding the cost for electric and emissions free machines? What is your experience in that respect? Thank you, uh, Ivo. <coughs> it's, uh... Uh, it's been an interesting journey, and and um, and as as Marit also mentioned, you know, our, our assumption has been that that there is a, a, an initial um, sort of higher investment cost, and that is important, of course, in this phase of the transition where we rely very much on on you know um, uh, tailored uh, first pilot phase uh, machinery and equipment. So so they are costly to to. Um, to buy, but then you have an energy savings cost, and and um, it depends, of course, of what kind of machine you are using and how energy intensive the machine is, uh, how this sort of uh, calculation looks. On peut but, uh, um, and of course, the energy cost uh, has been uh, sort of uh, changed a lot now the, the last year during due to the to the war going on. So, but. Uh, but in general, in general, I, I think you know it's it's a lot of savings uh, during your lifetime. So the so the sort of uh, total cost of operation for for the machine and then for the companies using these machines is uh, is much less. Uh, you know the extra cost even in this very early stage is much less than um, than uh, than you know if you looked only at the investment uh, upfront. So, so there is no easy way to answer your question on, on you know, how much more is uh, is you know the the cost from from going to electric, but uh, but I think when we look into this, and you can have more detailed information from the in the links that Marit showed to you that is in the presentation, you can you can look at the different studies that we have done, and. Uh, and I think our impression is that you know, from 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 our sort of perspective, when we commission for for doing uh, typical water and sewage uh, rehabilitation in the city centre, I think it's a typical type of work that most cities in uh, in Europe do uh, as a sort of continuous process to to renew and to 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 keep the the water and sewage system. We have an estimate of from, from zero to 10% extra cost for the works. That is just an estimate based on now uh, a portfolio of projects uh, since 2019 and a lot of different uh, situations, you know, where, where these uh, machines are used in different projects with different circumstances. I think we have seen for some projects that we tender for in the typical, you know, 
uh, range of 10 million euros for for a, for a sort of uh, medium size uh, infrastructure project. Uh, then, then we have seen also, you know, projects where the the zero emission alternative is also the one alternative with the least cost. So there is an element of sort of strategic pricing maybe in this market where, where some of the companies that want to do work for Oslo, they know that we that we uh, re re will require uh, zero emission and, and they also, with their tendering, uh, provide us a favorable cost. So. So it's difficult, and it's um, it's uh, of course a lot uh, depending on the circumstances. For example, how easily available is electricity from the grid at the project site? So that is something that also Marit highlighted the importance of. You know, you you need to plan for this kind of projects in a bit different way. You need to think about the energy supply. Um, what is really encouraging now in Oslo is that we see a lot of providers now coming in with, with different kinds of battery systems to support the energy supply on site, so that you, for example, you can have really fast charging opportunities, uh, even at places where the, where the power supply is quite weak. Uh, and we also see these kinds of solutions being adapted so that they don't uh, consume too much space. So, so there's a lot of creativity in the market ongoing now in Oslo, and, and, um, and we see a lot of new innovations and solutions, you know, um, and the cost is, um, of course, an element in this early stage, but, uh, but our studies also indicate that you, as soon as this is serially produced, uh, as soon as, you know, the market moves on and this is more of a standard solution available in the market, then, of course, the cost will also come down on the investment side, as we have seen in, in, in private cars market, for example. Okay, thank you, Ivo. Super, Philip. Many, many thanks. I will now pass the floor to my colleague Francesca, who will read the questions that we have received from uh, uh, the audience and which are appeared on slide. Thank you, Ivo, and thank you to our speakers. We have a first question for Christian. So, Christian, what do you think has been the key to overcoming the difficulties of carrying out a pilot test with these characteristics? Thank you very much. Well, the, first of all, is uh, to dare to to have the, um, to, um, the ambition and to dare to move forward, uh, knowing that the, that it can fail, but trusting you can uh, rely on um, succeeding. So we, as I have already said, we have um, a lack of experience. So. We use the experience, we, we learn from the experience from cities like Oslo, for example. And then we, when we had the, the knowledge for uh, having the, the bravery to move forward, then we contact with a key supplier that, that uh, offered the, the machinery uh, to use the, the working room. And then, as I said before, we had um, a lot of dialogue, a lot of ambition. We, uh, we, all the companies involved in this pilot uh, believed in what we were doing. We, we believed in the change of the way of making the, the works. So, uh, for example, we have a problem with one of the accumulators in the, in the works. We found a way to, to, take, to get another accumulator inside uh, the phase of electricity. Uh, well, we we believe in what we're doing, and that's a that's a, a key key a key element to to get into to do the the pilot. So as I said, so learning with the with the ears uh, op, spread open and and wanting to learn and wanting to to try even even failing. Uh, so that we can get to the, the final result of making a pilot that worked well and with good, very good results. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question for all of you. Uh, maybe we can start from Philip and then go back to Christian. Which costs for electricity did you take into account given the recent increase in prices for electricity? Yeah, 
If I can start off, I think it's it's uh, we have done these cost analysis, and and I won't go into details now, but you can read about them in the report that uh, Marit provides a link to. Uh, we have done three different sort of assumptions about the energy pricing, and and try to sort of do a kind of sensitivity analysis, and and the market that we are seeing today is of course. Uh, with extremely high electricity prices also in, in Norway. So that would be sort of the high-end uh, version. And um, I can't give you the numbers right now, but of course, um, there's a lot of uncertainty in, in, in how energy prices will develop going forward. And that, of course, is, uh, is an issue that, that uh, sort of um, uh, brings more risks and, and more uncertainty into the into the sort of cost side of, of this uh, process. Yeah, thank you. Yes, as, as Felix said, I, I will add that uh, costs are increasing constantly. So we took the price of the, of the market of the electricity in, in the moment we took the, the pilot down. But as, as I said, I want to, we want to do another pilot and then Let's, let, we will see the difference in electric cost of uh, since next summer, last summer to this new period when we we can do it. So it was the market prices in the moment we we carried out the the working sites. Thank you very much. For your... I... Yes, of course. Yes, if I may add, I uh, I will post uh, the link to the report that Philip just mentioned also uh, in the presentation, but. Uh... If I may, I can try to share the the screen. So we had um, a report done by a Norwegian Science Institute called SINTEF, an impact assessment of zero emission building processes. So there are some figures here also for the electricity price and the different prices in uh, going forward also. So um, I encourage you to have a look at the impact assessment if you want to get more into detail. So just a quick look at that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Marit. Uh, we have a question for uh, Philip, I would say, about how city councils are engaging with construction companies to keep developing pilots as the one done in Barcelona. How can we move forward? I think it's a really strong, important feature from, from, from the work in Norway that, that we have this political engagement. So actually, as, as Marit also mentioned, this started off in 2016, and it was actually the mayor who invited then the, the local industry to a dialogue about, you know, then the, the question was if, if there is possibility to, to work fossil-free with, with, with sustainable biofuels. And this transition to biofuels was really rapid, and, and the market also returned to us and, and asked us if, if as a city we could go stronger into demanding zero emission solutions. Um, I think you know I cannot underline uh, the importance you know of, of that market dialogue. It's it's really a key part of it, and also we have in Oslo. I don't know whether that's relevant for all cities, but we have a construction company. Then it's a public uh, company that that uh, sort of build schools and nursery homes and different kinds of public buildings in the city. And they certainly were on board into this together with the mayor and, and started this dialogue with the market. So, so uh, I think that's, uh, that's wise. And we also did a lot of dialogue when we first uh, did the pilot project to, to start out with, with some you know, um, request for information from, from the companies that might be interested to, to tender for this and, and you know, uh, investigate what kinds of solutions are there on power supply, on machinery, and you know, start the dialogue with that. And, and to put some, you know, we, we put some efforts into that and some resources also, a, a, a dedicated individual that, that sort of assisted this dialogue together with the project leader. So, so it's, I, I cannot stress enough, you know, the importance of that kind of dialogue. It's really difficult if you don't do that. I think, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Add, I would add, if, 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 uh, if you allow me, please. Uh, there's uh, the possibility to. I, I have seen the the, the, the question is uh, from uh, I think Alejandro Dominguez, I guess from from Spain. Uh, we in Barcelona, uh, we think we can also put in touch uh, 
from in Spain and Barcelona and Catalonia and speak about doing new pilots and keep in touch because as I said, there's a work to do with uh, construction companies and administration here, the local administrations. So if we can get in touch, uh, we can try to move forward uh, together. And it would be easier than going alone, and because the, the work to do is, is is a huge work to do here in, in Spain. We are we are a big uh, country with a lot of uh, energy and and. We, I, I encourage you to, to put in touch with us and, and work together in this. You have my email in case you can contact with me. Thanks a lot to, to both. Uh, maybe I just uh, read a comment which uh, relates uh, noise, which is a, a very important, uh, a very important uh, aspect in the sense that uh, even a three decibel reduction is, is uh, still considered a quite a significant uh, reduction in terms, in terms of, of noise. And I think this is a very valuable uh, comment. Uh, also, I, I would like to thank Vincent for this, uh, uh, which uh, uh, for thanking uh, the speakers for their presentation, and which is a, we are admiring and very interested in, in your works. So this is certainly something which in, incentivizes uh, all of you to continue with this work. Um, I think that there is still a question, a very interesting question, and I will pass again the floor to Francesca. So we have an interesting question about BIM, Building Information Modeling. Uh, the question is, do you include BIM as a requirement in the procurement tenders for zero emission construction sites? In your experience, has this contributed to reaching emission reduction targets? And I would add, if you don't already use it, do you plan on including it in the future? Yes, I can. I may start answering if that's uh, appropriate. Uh, no, there's no uh, requirement for a BIM in uh, our standard requirements, uh, zero emission construction sites in Oslo, but we are looking into the digitalization of following up these requirements, and that is absolutely needed. Uh, joining the machinery with GPS and so on, and getting more automatic results. Uh, but I know that uh, the, the building and construction uh, uh, agency, as Philip uh, mentioned, uh, Oslo Big, Oslo Oslo Building, uh, they are using BIM, of course, in their uh, overall construction projects. But uh, the the building and construction site is not really a part of it, and it's not part of our standard requirements. But if anyone has an experience, we will be very glad to learn. So please get in touch. Thank you, Marit. Uh, would uh, you like to jump in, Christian, as well? Excuse me? Would you also like to reply to this question about BIM? Do you include BIM as a requirement in uh, your procurement tenders? Well, we, we, I, I think we are in an earlier stage, uh, and, and maybe if you, we are too too ambitious, <laughs> then we can we can fall down. So now we are not in this point. I I think it, it, it has to be studied in next steps, but not in this one. We are in Barcelona. Thank you very much. We have another interesting question. So um, Stefan says that indeed you have used equipment which is available for working processes known today, but are there any new ideas created while working to rethink machinery as well as processes from OEM site to speed up reaching the zero emission construction site? I guess this is as well a question for all of you. Yeah, I can I can head off. You know, it's it's uh, it's a good question, and I think we we really see that that you know focusing on zero emission also means you know implicitly focusing on the energy use at site. So it it has a lot of implications for the building process, and we see that you know the for example um, the at our water and sewage projects we have a lot of focus now on circular. Um, soil management at on site because the, the transport of soil for longer distances is of course energy consuming so so they tend to be more focused on 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 using uh, soils locally and finding you know creative solutions so that's just one example of you know how processes are adapting uh, as a result of focusing on emissions and energy use um, yeah thank you 
if I may add to that, we also, just in line with what Philip is saying, we see that there's a very high percentage of electrical machinery in no dig projects as opposed to large uh, excavator and the, the projects where we need to dig a huge hole in the ground to build a new metro, for instance. It's much, of course, much easier to plan uh, using electric if you can scale down the energy use of the whole project. So that's why I also underlined the, the choose wisely uh, pilot projects uh, lessons learned. So try to look for uh, look for solutions that can uh, reduce energy uh, need in all aspects. Excellent. Many, many, many thanks, Marit. Um, so I will just move to the final part of our uh, webinar. We are really already out of time, but I just wanted to uh, present you and illustrate you the future. We have uh, this excellent project, which was part of the Big Buyers 2. We have now launched uh, a new project, which will include 10 working groups. So there is going to be a significant scale up from four to 10. Six of these are going to be in the area of digital green, one specifically addressing the purchase of IT, two in the field of social procurement, a new area, and two working groups are going to be in the field of health. Um, we just set very macro level, you see, directions for these working groups, but two working groups are going to be in the relevant for the Euro U new European Bauhaus and the decarbonization and mobility. And we presume, given the success and the interest also uh, that uh, was raised in this webinar, that there is going to be further activity in relation to a zero emission construction site. As it is mentioned in this uh, website, there is going to be a digital platform which will support the work of this uh, working group, which will facilitate the cooperation. I will come back to this in later. Next slide, please. How the big buyers work? Well, the, there is a very thorough needs assessment which is carried out by uh, um, contractor. This uh, has the purpose of identifying the specific product areas in which the working groups will concentrate. Um, the, the contractor, of course, will organize meetings, uh, uh, webinars, uh, and also will animate the work. Uh, we also cover all the travel expenditures for uh, site visits, for uh, meetings, uh, um, given that we presume that uh, public buyers normally do not have a budget uh, for uh, missions. Uh, next slide. In this new project, we will have new activities, which aim at uh, really strengthening the link between the innovation ecosystem and uh, public demand. So there will be hackathons, learning expeditions, pitching events or challenges, and also virtual meetings with all the decision makers of public buyers participating in the big buyers' networks. As said before, we are about to launch a digital public buyers community platform. This is really coming soon. We are finalizing the, the final details. This will host a number of communities of practice um, including the 10 working groups set up in the Big Buyers project. And uh, the objective of this community is really to use the collective intelligence of participating parties to uh, carry out joint actions, such, for, such, uh, such as, for example, preliminary market consultation preparation, market engagement with uh, uh, participants, studying the market, and exchanging information on technical para uh, parameters. Next slide, please. Also, we are going to uh, organize two further webinars as part of this cycle, still on the results of the Big Buyers Project. The first is going to be on the 21st of March, still at 11. Heavy duty electric vehicles for street cleaning and waste collection. The second one on circular construction material focusing on asphalt. This is going to be in April after the Easter break. A little bit also of information on some of our, our activities, the Green uh, and Socially Responsible Help Desk, which is available in case you have questions, which also organizes very interesting webinars. And the next one, for example, is on the contribution of social economy to circular public procurement. And uh, also, um, to move ahead, in, um, we have our newsletter in where we 
provide all the relevant information on our future webinars, funding opportunities, projects, and also regulatory development. So I really invite you to subscribe in case you want to keep up to date. And finally, to stay tuned, here in this slide you have all the relevant information, including also our uh, LinkedIn groups, where we publish a lot of information on uh, um, on aspects relating to social or to innovation procurement. And also the webinar will be, uh, which has been recorded, has been, will be um, saved and placed in our YouTube channel, which also, um, where also you can find all other webinars which we have been held in, in, in the past. And uh, in case you want to participate in the Big Buyers project, you can also write to this uh, functional uh, mailbox. Uh, my final word, I would like really to thank uh, all our speakers uh, from Oslo, from Barcelona, and also uh, Philip from the Construction Unit. And also I would like to thank generally all our team for organizing this webinar and uh, the Construction Unit, which has uh, spread the word about this important project to the high, through the high-level construction forum. So many thanks, and uh, see you for the next uh, webinar.